just one second because I want to show you who and what we're talking about when we talk about this stuff. Let me just show you real quick. This guy right here. What? Here we go. This guy right here is a guy named Gavin McInnes. Anybody heard of him? Gavin McInnes um, is a right-wing uh, pundit and um, activist, you could call him, who was involved in the founding of a, um, a, of a magazine that we call Vice. You ever heard of Vice magazine? You might know of it. It's a, you know, it's a pretty big deal. Um, it's right here. This is what Vice looks like. See Vice? He was a co-founder of Vice News. Um, they do not have any involvement with him anymore. The reason why they don't have any involvement with him anymore is because he became a massive liability. A absolutely massive liability. I don't know about that, Lensky. I don't actually know about that specific one. Oh, YouTube works? We'll check out YouTube in a bit. Remember when Lance called into Gavin's live show to troll? No, but that is amazing, and I would watch that if you can find me the clip, because that sounds amazing. Um, Gavin McInnes is a malignant troll. And actually, you know what? That's not even a great way to describe him, because he's more than a malignant troll. Not only is, a, is he a malignant troll, he's also a rampant anti-Semite. Gavin McInnes founded an organization in 2016 that we now know as the Proud Boys. The Proud Boys is, let's just explain what they call themselves. What they call themselves is a Western chauvinist uh, social club. Now you might wonder, what the fuck is Western chauvinism? We will get to that. That's what they call themselves. But let's talk about Gavin McInnes first. Um, the leader of the hipster movement. He's no longer the leader of the Proud Boys. Um, yeah, that's true, Marinara, though I would avoid those words specifically. However, he is absolutely a white nationalist. He is absolutely an anti-Semite. That much is absolutely true. So, the Proud Boys was founded on a, uh, the Proud Boys was founded on a website called Tacky Mag. Has anyone ever heard of Tacky Mag? I cannot show Tacky Mag on stream because it is banned from Twitch. You can't talk about it. Tacky's Mag, uh, or Tacky Mag, Tacky's Magazine, is a far-right newsletter. A Nazi newsletter. It is a, a blog site that has multiple contributors, and it talks about stuff like race realism and the Jewish question all the time. Um... Yeah, no, I can talk about it. I can talk about it. I just can't actually show it, and I won't. So that's where the, the Proud Boys were founded. The Proud Boys were put together on the forums for Tacky's Magazine. Um, they've, they've published everything from Holocaust denial. They've published everything to ra uh, white racial supremacy arguments. That's what they do. That's what Tacky Mag is. Thank you very much, Wassie. I appreciate that. Um, that's why I do it. I bring this shit for you. I make this content for you. Um, hey, Zoom Zoom Bang, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime subscription. Deeply appreciate that. Is it as bad as Kiwi Farms or Stormfront? Well, Kiwi Farms is a harassment website, and Stormfront is is literally an open neo-Nazi website. So it's probably about as bad. Um, Wasi? Oh, okay, Wasi. Gotcha. Um, the it's it's probably about as bad as Stormfront, but it's different than Kiwi Farms. Kiwi Farms is like a harassment site. They 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 like harass people. That's like their entire purpose of Kiwi of Kiwi Kiwi. I almost said Kiwi Front, of um, whatever fuck it's called, fucking Kiwi Farms. Okay, so Tacky's Magazine. Just so you all know, Tacky's Magazine, uh, was where ne the neo Nazi Richard Spencer first started using the term alt right. He wrote on this website about the rising alt-right. Richard Spencer, the neo-Nazi Richard Spencer, started, like, coined the term the alt-right on Tacky's Mag. And in fact, Richard Spencer was the managing editor of Tacky Mag. And he published Gavin McInnes' work on multiple occasions. Just so you know, I have 
a little bit of evidence on this because here's the thing again i prepped to do um to do this during a debate so i have sources for all of my information oh that's great thanks for letting me know we'll, we'll be able to do some youtube stuff in a bit this was published by the miami new times um in december of 2018 this discusses and cites um a number of uh articles um that were published that were written by Gavin McInnes and published later uh, by Richard Spencer on Tacky Mag. You all can read this if you really want to. Um, they talk all about the the Proud Boys. They talk about Enrique Tario, how Enrique Tario came into um, came into power. This is a really good article. Um, yeah, I know YouTube. It's down. Who would have known? <laughs> Chats let me know many many times. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty solid. Um, solid article if you want to get a, a, a like if you are a reedy person and you want to read a whole bunch of stuff about the proud boys but i you i was able to get some basic information out of this um yeah i'm not going to read this one on stream obviously but i just figured i would let you know that um my research document on this is very well cited um let me just tell you some of the stuff that um tacky's mag published tacky's mag published um this september just so you know a, a article called BLM's Hitlerian Heart, in which the second paragraph is written in a fake Jewish accent and makes jokes about gas chambers. So yeah, that was this year, just so you know. They're still doing the Nazi shit. Um... So yeah, that's the sort of stuff that they that they publish on this website. And Gavin McInnes was published on this website multiple times. Yeah, they wrote it in like a, they wrote it in like a fake Jewish voice. If if you know like, you know how you might do that. It's yeah, it's fucked. It's it's really fucked. Um, can I link my research document? I will. I'm gonna clean up my research document and then I'm gonna publish it. Um, it's not online right now. Um, no, like marinara. I can't do it because it's racist. If I was to do the impression, but you know what I'm talking about, when they... Just go look it up yourself. Listen, these are things I can't show because of TOS, all right? So then... Ah, I'm not gonna do it. I won't. I literally won't. I won't do it. Yes, it's a Yiddish accent, and you can write things using Yiddish words, like saying things like, oi vey, all the time. That's what they do. That's what they did. Um, yes, he did. Freedom, Freedom Dow. Yes, he did. No, no, it's okay, Marinara. It's good. L yes, exactly, Cuck. You've got it. Um, um, so yeah, just so you know, we're going to continue on this Gavin McInnes thing. On Tacky Mag in 2010, Gavin McInnes wrote an article about Muslims in which he argued, and these are his words, that the Muslim world was full of shoeless, toothless, inbred, hill-dwelling, rifle-toting, sodomy-prone men ready to kill for a god that they've never seen. That is what he wrote on Tacky's Mag in 2010, shortly before founding the Proud Boys. Hmm. Sounds a little bit racist, doesn't it? That sounds just, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit racist. Has Gavin seen his god? No. But he doesn't care because he's a dishonest grifter. But we'll get to that. He argued that Muslim... In this article, he argued that Muslim people could not be good members of British society because they were too inbred to be a part of British society. Um, this article is still up, still associated with his name on the website, and the, the article is called The Trouble with Islam. Interesting name for an article, huh? Kind of interesting. Um, he also made a video uh, around this time. I can't remember the exact date that he did this. Oh, it was in 2017 that he did this. So shortly after founding the Proud Boys, he made a video that he titled The 10 Things That I Hate About the Jews. And in this video, he admitted to becoming anti-Semitic because he hated Jews so much. And he also participated in Holocaust denial. This was in 2017, three years ago. Gavin McInnes defined himself as a race realist when he wrote for the American Renaissance in 2014. Um, he wrote openly alongside Richard Spencer and Jared Taylor. Jared Taylor was the actual person who invented the term alt-right, whereas Richard Spencer just popularized it. 
Um, and then also he regularly used, when he was writing blogs, he would regularly use racial slurs to describe black people. Now, you might say, well, wait, Gavin McInnes isn't involved with the Proud Boys anymore. But that's not actually true. He stepped down, and we'll explain why he stepped down. He stepped down, but he's still adored by the group, and his word is taken very important. Proof of this is that when Donald Trump was in the hospital, Gavin McInnes went to Walter Reed, and the Proud Boys gave him a standing ovation when he arrived. So, he's still pretty involved with the Proud Boys, as it turns out. Gavin McInnes, even though he's stepped down as leader of a notoriously secretive right-wing group, is still adored by them. So it's not like he's really left or that his influence is any left or is any worse. The founder and longtime leader of the Proud Boys is an open anti-Semite, is an open, uh, a, 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 an open Islamophobe, clearly sexist, and also repeatedly uses racial slurs. So... What do you think the foundations of the Proud Boys really are, given that the founder does that sort of things and made a social club that he calls a Western chauvinist social club? Hey, Lily Aya, happy to have you. Oh yeah, and of course, that was what started this all, talking about the Proud Boys, is of course they rebranded into the Proud Goys, because they definitely don't, they're definitely not an anti-Semitic or racist organization. Also, happy to have you, Lily. Um, yeah, it's a racist organization. They, but they will say it's not. And in fact, one of the arguments of the of the person I was going um, to debate was that they weren't racist. And as it turns out, yeah, they are. Lily, consider joining our website. We have a website just like Vosh does. It's right here. There you go. Consider joining the website. It's made by the same person who made Vosh's site. So come join us. We'd love to have you. Um, it's awesome. And we have tons of cool emotes. It's great. So... That's Gavin McInnes. That's one of the members. Let's talk about a couple of the other members, okay? So, Tusitala Tiny Tozy. Has anyone heard of, uh, oh, White Nervosa made my website. The same person who made Vosh's website. Yeah, it's really cool. White Nervosa is amazing. Um, you should support her on Patreon if you want her to keep making awesome websites like this. Um, so yeah, if any of you have heard of Tusitala Tiny Tozy, He's infamous here in the Pacific Northwest for beating the shit out of people all the motherfucking time. Uh, he's been to prison. He is currently wanted, if I remember correctly, as of last I checked. He's a violent criminal who's convicted, who's been, who has multiple assault convictions, who's repeatedly violated parole, parole in order to go to protests and fight people. As recently as August of this year, so just a few months ago, he was involved in explicit violence in protests in Portland and Washington. He, ref uh, he re when he was asked at his last court appearance whether he was still a member of the Proud Boys, he said, I, I, he said no comment, though he stated unequivocally, God bless the Proud Boys. He's also a member of the Patriot Prayer, which you might know of. Let's talk about another member of the Proud Boys, Jason Kessler. You ever heard of Jason Kessler? infamous for the Unite the Right rally. Uh, he's no longer a member of the group. He was kicked out of the group because the PR fallout after Unite the Right was so bad that they said, sorry, we got to kick you out. Um, however, he planned the Unite the Right rally alongside neo-Nazis like Richard Spencer and the KKK. He planned the Unite the rally, Right rally too, which heavily involved explicit and open white supremacists. He's also a criminal guilty of assault, uh, and here are some of his statements, just so you know. After Heather Heyer, any of you know Heather Heyer? Heather Heyer was the protester who was killed um, at Unite the Right rally. Um, Heather Heyer was killed um, after someone drove their car into, into her and killed her. Is there a white name genocide thing around here? Is there can be now. Genocide, genocide a thing around here? here? Let's do it. If anybody wants to get rid of the white names in chat, I would deeply appreciate that. Also, just keep in mind, just like on Vosh's site, if you sign out and sign back in after subbing or gifting a sub, their names will change colors. 
What do you think of talking to people like Sushi on Twitch if you're arguing against them? Been having di difficulty having uh, deciding how to handle that sort of thing. Good question, San Sol. I actually was set up to debate Suspect Sushi, but you can't actually do it on here anymore. Just can't. You're not allowed to have Proud Boys on your show. A white name? Um, a white name means somebody who doesn't have a sub. See, people who don't have subscriptions, their, their name is white. And some people who are very nice... Um, hey, thank you, hello. I appreciate that. Yeah, I really appreciate all the VGGers coming through. It makes me really happy. Yeah, the, the reason why people joke about saying white chat genocide is because that means people are gifting subs to other people to get rid of the white names. It's really great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a joke. It's a completely silly, edgy joke, but it's about getting, it's about giving, giving subs to me. If you want to, go for it, but I'm not done with content, so I won't beg for subs yet, later. That'll come later, after I give you guys the content first content first subs later um yeah unfortunately the twitch subs don't carry over yet someday they might but i don't have that feature yet so site subs are where you get the fancy name look at that now you got your fancy name and there is one emote that is uh it's the peanids emote which is a reference to the dicks emote which you might be able to find some people might find some secret vgg eggs my, ge my gestures are exactly like Vosh's in some ways. In fact, actually, my, my gestures are way more wild than Vosh's. Vosh actually gestures significantly less than I do. My hands are all over the place. I'm like the most fidgety person you can imagine. It's actually wild. Um, yeah, so... Hey, Splat Crab, thank you so much for the Tier 1 subscription. Deeply appreciate that. Um, yeah, I have quite the audience. It's fantastic. Uh, Vosh gave me a raid, and we're, we're doing fun. Um, we're having a fun time talking about this stuff. If you hands, if you have hands or a voice, you are Vosh. It's true. Everything. <laughs> I am literally, I am literally Vosh. That is what people are telling me. Um, giving dicks to the people. It's true. That's my job. Yeah. Everything. My, my, I, just like Vosh, I am, I am also Vosh. That's the secret. We were all Vosh all along. Yeah. Um, there are some people who really think like, who really want to hammer that and whatever. I don't care. Uh, people have inspirations. Everybody said that Vosh was just a destiny clone. So and Vosh is doing pretty good right now. So, hey, if I'm just a Vosh clone, I guess I'm going to be doing pretty good. Kiss my ass. There we go. Ooh. All right. Um, trans Vosh. Trans Vosh, maybe. Um, in or instead of v being Vosh, I would simply be Vosh, five head. Um, but, yeah. Uh, sorry, Sans Soul. I didn't mean to ignore your question there. I just got a little bit derailed. Sans Soul, uh, I was going to debate Suspect Sushi. I think that we should do these things with utmost care. If we're going to debate people, um, I would still be up to discussing um, this sort of thing on YouTube in the future, but it's against TOS right now, and moving my entire streaming infrastructure over to YouTube is a big process, so I wasn't ready to do that. Um, oh, thank you, Freedom Dow. I really, really appreciate that. Means uh, means the world to me. I, I really like that. I try to be very engaged with chat as best as I can. I could be a Hassan if my head was smaller. Oh, oops, I forgot to fix the five head. I'll fix it tonight. I Okay, I will fix it tonight. I promise. Hey, thank you for the tier one sub. Deeply appreciate that, Orellen. Really appreciate that a lot. You make it possible for me to make this content. Anyway, so yeah, when it comes to debating people like um, Proud Boys, here's my opinion on it. Um, and... I've said this for a while, but I think that if we're going to engage with somebody like a Proud Boy, we have to make sure that we do our fucking job. Um, because when you're arguing with a Proud Boy, you will never convince the Proud Boy. It will just never happen. You need to be, you need to go into a conversation like that to immunize the audience to the rhetoric of a Proud Boy. So the way that I would go into a conversation like that is to teach people what really are the Proud Boys? I want them to see that my opponent, the Proud Boy, is a liar about his own organization and that he has to lie in order for other people to think his organization is legit. So I do think that, so to sort of pinch off the answer to that question, um, Sans Soul, um, I do think that you can responsibly talk to people like that, but it has to be done so carefully. Yeah. Yeah, so... Hopefully the Discord link is working. Um, if it's not, I'll fix it. Okay, let me fix the Discord link real quick before we go any further. I'll, I'll fix the Discord link. Just give me a second. Um, I need to fix this. Uh, okay. Here we go. Wait. Here we go. There we go. Uh, one second. Discord. 
Bada 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 bada. Bam. Ah. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. All right, Discord command should be fixed now. <sighs> no more problems with the Discord command, hopefully. There we go. That'll that'll do it. A dabble do ya. Um, won't going hard on the lies polarize their audience against you? No, not necessarily. Because if you come in um, with a lot of preparation, you can show people the truth. You can show people what the lies are and they will become immunized to that. Now, of course, you're you're probably, keep in mind, you're probably never going to be able to actually reach the audience, the devoted audience of a proud boy. But that's not the goal. The goal is to, pre is to prevent the larger majority and vulnerable people in that audience from falling for the rhetoric of the proud boys. Um, the the goal is, is not to, um, again is not to necessarily convince like the devoted followers of some random proud boy on the internet that proud boys are bad the goal is to pr convince everyone else and that's why i think you have to consider platforming like for example if i was going to well in fact this was what i was going to do when i was going to debate the proud boy i was going to be on a neutral platform dylan burns show who i could trust with being a fair moderator i did a shitload of research and my goal was to talk to the audience who may not know anything about the proud boys my goal will be to teach them about the proud boys why they should not trust the proud boys and why this particular representative of the proud boys is being dishonest and doesn't have their best interests at heart that's my goal so that's the way that i went about it personally and of course the debate never ended up happening because of the changes to twitch tos but that doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. And I would apply the exact same rules for that future debate as I would right now. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, it's okay. Have fun, Marinara. Um, Dylan is a lefty, but Dylan runs a very neutral platform. Um, even though Dylan himself is a lefty, he runs a debate show that's very neutral or attempts to be as neutral as possible. Yeah, never, never trust the proud soys. True. I never trust the fucking Proud Soys. Um, so yeah, let's continue talking about the Proud Boys now that we've gotten through that. Um, let's keep going. So we were talking about Jason Kessler. And the reason we were talking about Jason Kessler is because I'm trying to show you what their most prominent members are like and what they have done. So let's continue talking about Jason Kessler, another prominent member of the Proud Boys. Um, Heather Heyer, and, and this is what he said. Keep in mind. After Heather Heyer died, literally a day after Heather Heyer died from a random attack when she was peacefully protesting, she was run down by a car, okay? This is what Jason Kessler had to say. Heather Heyer was a fat, disgusting communist. Communists have killed 94 million. Looks like it was payback time. And then he linked to Stormfront. Then he linked to Stormfront. Um, he also said in 2017, this was again, after he had been ousted from the Proud Boys, but nonetheless had been a prominent member and they didn't exactly denounce him. They just said, sorry, we can't have you as a member anymore. He said, our entire country would be better off if the South had won the Civil War. Kessler later, oh, keep in mind that uh, sometimes when you talk to a Proud Boy, they will say, oh, well, we didn't know, the Proud Boys didn't know that uh, Jason Kessler was planning Unite the Right. But that's not true. In fact, it's so blatantly untrue that Jason Kessler went on Gavin McInnes' podcast himself to promote Unite the Right. McInnes also explicitly asked members of the Proud Boys to attend the event on a podcast, not in uniform. And also, it was later discovered that Gavin McInnes himself went to Unite the Right. So they actually did know that Ga Jason Kessler was an open member of the Proud Boys who was associated with neo-Nazis and white nationalists. They lie about that all the time. They lie about it all the time, but it's true. Um, I think, I think that's the crying Nazi. What's his name? The crying Nazi? No, that's Christopher Cantwell. That's Christopher Cantwell. He was also involved, but he's not a proud boy. So, let's talk another one. Kyle Chapman. 
That name probably sounds really familiar to you. Kyle Chapman is the guy who just did that. Vosh just covered this guy. If you all watched Vosh's stream yesterday, Vosh just covered this guy. Um, it's uh, based stickman Kyle Chapman. Kyle Chapman um, is the guy who just claimed to have instigated a coup among the Proud Boys and changed their name to the Proud Goys because he was tired of Jewish and black influence in his organization. Whoops. Yikes. Oops. Now, he was a member of the Proud Boys until, what, yesterday when he declared that he took over the Proud Boys? Whoops. This is a guy who has is a multiple felon with uh, multiple grand theft and robbery charges. So he's a criminal who robs people. Um, he's known as Based Stickman for an image of him smashing the head of a protester with a stick in Berkeley. Um, he openly espouses white nationalist um, beliefs, and he also has, on multiple times, encouraged violent revolution in the United States. This guy, oh, it gets more yikesy. Don't we're not even at the beginning. Don't you don't even worry. It gets even more wild. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this guy's a real problematic guy, and he was a, he never was kicked out, and they knew about all of this, and in fact. It gets even worse. Not only did they know about this, but Kyle Chapman worked with another guy. You might have heard of this guy too. Augustus Invictus. The LARPiest name you could ever imagine. The LARPiest name you could possibly imagine. Augustus Invictus. Um, before Augustus Invictus was a member of the Proud Boys, he ran for the Senate and he lost horrifically bad. Like he lost so hard it wasn't even funny. He lost in his campaign for the Senate. However, in his platform for running for Senate, this is what he advocated for. He publicly called immigrants parasites, all immigrants parasites. He claimed that America was being controlled by Jewish people and Muslims, and he advocated that eugenics explicitly for state-sanctioned eugenics. That is what Augustus Invictus, a later member of the Proud Boys, ran on when he ran for Senate. He claimed the, that the government was hiding the truth that MLK was secretly uh, a criminal, like a, a horrible criminal and a gang leader. So he's a mad conspiracy theorist. All of this was before he joined the Proud Boys. They welcomed him into their ranks nonetheless. In fact, Gavin McInnes invited Invictus onto his show, again, where he repeatedly discussed an armed revolution and suggested that lawyers who oppose him should be killed. McInnes never pushed back during this podcast. He just literally didn't push back on him. Augustus Invictus joined the Proud Boys, and then he um, found, and then he joined a group that was called the Fraternal Order of the Alt Knights, which was run by him and um, and Kyle Chapman. Which let me just describe to you what the Fraternal Order of the Alt Knights was. The Fraternal Order of the Alt Knights was. And this is the words of Gavin McInnes, the militant arm of the Proud Boys. So they were their job was to be more violent than the rest of the Proud Boys. Yeah, true famous horse. I got raided by uh, a really good, a, a wonderful, wonderful streaming friend, Vosh. You may have heard of him. Um, yeah, so there's another member that we have. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, Augustus Invictus was never asked to leave the Proud Boys. Um, even, even though they knew all of these things, even though he was openly advocating for the overthrow of the U S government, they never asked him, never asked him to leave. Yeah. More violent as in, is it the implication there? What they won't tell you, um, what they won't tell you when they say the militant arm is that the proud boys already have a requirement that you have to beat people up in order to move up in the ranks. You have to get in a fight with Antifa in order to move up. Um, in the ranks of the, that's just a fact. They, they openly state that you have to get in a fight with an Antifa member or a left radical leftist in order to move up. So that means that the fraternal order of the alt knights, what are they, what, what's after beating somebody up? What do you think is more militant than beating somebody up? I'll let you decide. I'm sure we all can figure that out. Nothing strange here. Thank you so much for the Twitch prime subscription. Really, really, 
uh, means the world to me. Thank you so much. So, let's continue. It's like a Nazi fight club. Yes, it's Nazi fight club. That's what it is. It's Nazi fight club. And they'll say it's everything else. They'll say, oh, it's a drinking club. They sell themselves as a social club. They sell themselves as a drinking club. They are none of these things. They are a white nationalist fight club. We're not done yet. Here's another prominent member of the, uh, of the, um, Proud Boys. Brian James. This guy was a member of the Indiana Proud Boys, and he was a member also at the same time of multiple racist skinhead gangs, including the Vinlanders Social Club. The Vinlanders Social Club is a group that is linked to nine racially charged murderers. Murders. That is what I would comfortably call a terrorist group. A group that has killed multiple people in racially charged attacks is a terrorist group. So the Proud Boys, whether or not the Proud Boys themselves are a terrorist group, they had members who they knew were also members of other racist terrorist groups. But it's not done there. Okay? Because they also had a chairman. After, after, um, Gavin McInnes, I almost forgot his name for a second. After Gavin McInnes, um, after, uh, Gavin McInnes stepped down, the next leader of the Proud Boys was a guy whose name was Jason Van Dyke. He's also the official lawyer of the Proud Boys. Um, he was banned for, he was, let me just tell you about the type of person we're dealing with, with the short-term chairman and also the the official lawyer for the proud boys this guy was banned from twitter haha <laughs> you say <laughs> everyone gets banned from twitter let me explain to you what he was banned from twitter for he was banned from twitter for making death threats against a black man who was just another random user including um uh, a a black politician who he tweeted a picture of a noose at and he said look good and hard at this picture you slur slur this is where i'm going to put your neck that's what he said that got him banned off of twitter this is a, a lawyer the lawyer of the proud boys who was uh the chairman for like a week or two before the current leader enrique tario enrique tario is the current chairman of the proud boys so now we have a little bit of a history on just what the Proud Boys really are. Isn't that strange? Isn't that just, you know, isn't that just so fucking weird? It, it almost seems, it almost seems like the Proud Boys lie about what they actually believe in. And while they sell themselves as whatever a Western chauvinist club is, they actively encourage and welcome white nationalist and Nazi members. Terrible. Yeah terrible so let's talk about a little of the things that they've uh that they've it's just a string of coincidences yeah it's so weird yeah um but let's talk let's talk a little more about what they do what do the proud boys actually do now that we know who the proud boys are we know who they are and where they came from what do they actually do well there's a couple of things one one of the first things that they did um, was they interrupted a indigenous mourning ceremony in Vancouver. Uh, the Proud Boys are very active in Canada, especially on the west coast of Canada. And they had no quarrel with the indigenous people, but there was a, an, an indigenous day of mourning. Hey, Toronto Dump. Happy to have you and thank you so much. Time to rid myself of my white name, Easy. <laughs> thank you so much, Toronto Dump. Really appreciate that. Uh, your name will change. You just got to log out and log back in. That's all you got to do. And it'll it'll upgrade it. Uh, mourning, as in like crying. So there was an indigenous ceremony where they were going to mourn the victims of anti-indigenous policy in Canada, of which there are many, just so you know. I know I don't have enough time to go into the history right now, but just so you know, Canada's policies towards indigenous people, First Nation people in Canada are atrocious absolutely atrocious so they showed up and they played loudspeakers over the morning ceremony they just harassed these people that's what they did now that's now that's like okay that's pretty bad taste but that's not exactly like 
you know, that's not like terrorist shit. That's just really poor taste, right? Going to a indigenous mourning ceremony, specifically a, a mourning ceremony that's about how racism has killed a lot of indigenous people, and then playing um, music over the indigenous ceremony, screaming at people, you know, you could say that's just a very, very bad ex way of expressing yourself. But... There's more. Of course. Of course there's more. Of course there's fucking more. Um, they uh, beat up Antifa. So when we say we beat up Antifa, what do they mean by Antifa? Would be the first question, right? Like, so if I was to tell you guys, like, beat up X group of people, right? Like, say I was like, oh, we need to beat up the bad guys. You would probably ask, well, who are the bad guys, right? Well, we have to ask, who the fuck are are the Antifa people. How do they determine who's Antifa? And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't seem like they really do. Anybody they beat up, they claim is Antifa. They beat up a lot of people. They go to all kinds of protests and they beat people up and then they claim that they were Antifa. Weird, huh? In fact, the most infamous example of this, oh, of course, there's more. There's always more with this group. In fact, one of the best examples of this is at the most infamous example of Proud Boy violence. This is an event that's known as the fight at the Metropolitan Republican <laughs> Club. The Metropolitan Republican Club is a New York City gathering of Republicans. And the Proud Boys attended this event um, in mass. A lot of Proud Boys showed up to this event. And what ended up happening is that at least three people were beaten within an inch of their life. Well, that's funny that you asked that, Toxic Blood. How do Antifa determine who is a Proud Boy? Well, it's really funny because Proud Boys wear a uniform. Proud Boys have a, a hierarchical membership. They identify themselves as Proud Boys. So it's really easy to do so. Whoops. That one, that argument didn't last very long. Um, so let me just tell you. At the Metropolitan Republican Club, they they went out. There was a there was a big like pro Trump like yeah yeah we're going for Trump we're going for Trump, um, and then afterwards they went out into the streets where there were some protesters who don't like the Proud Boys and knew the Proud Boys were there and so they showed up with signs that said get out Proud Boys we don't like you, um, and they went out and instigated fights. There were now keep in mind this went to court. And in court, there were submitted for evidence three clear and conclusive videos that showed Proud Boys not just not just fighting, but instigating the fights on the streets outside of the Metropolitan Republican Club. Interesting thing about New York City, there's a whole bunch of security cameras everywhere and a lot of people with cell phones. There was a lot of video footage of this. Ten Proud Boys were identified, with seven of them pleading guilty to riot and attempted gang assault. Two of them accepted plea deals, and the rest were charged. Or, and one was uh, one was um, it was not identified was not identified clear enough, and wasn't charged. So, out of the ten, seven of them pleaded guilty, two accepted plea deals, and only one was actually let go. Um, the there is actually a very infamous video. Some of you may have already seen this before in the past. If you know anything about the Proud Boys, you probably have. There is an infamous video of a bunch of guys in polos and khakis kicking the shit out of a guy on the ground who's just curled up on the ground. That was the Proud Boys beating up one of the three people that they did, or one of the th three that we know of people that they did that to that night. The Proud Boys chased down and outnumbered so-called anti-fascists. Keep in mind, the anti-fascists themselves were never identified. In fact, this just goes to show you how much people don't want to snitch. They didn't testify. They, were, they said, hey, if you were beaten up, come forward. And they said, we're not going to get involved. But you have the evidence that people were beaten. So the people who were beaten within an inch of their life didn't show. They, didn't, they wouldn't snitch. They refused to snitch. And guess what? As it turns out, people who've gone to go find that out, people who've gone to go find that out afterwards have said, these people weren't even Antifa. They were just random protesters who were there for a totally different reason. And nonetheless, they refused to squeal. That's how much they actually don't believe in squealing to the cops. Nonetheless, they didn't need them to, to, they didn't need them to talk in order to convict them.
At this point, Gavin McInnes um, had to leave the group. And you might go, well, why did he leave the group at this point? Had it impacted his career? No. He was, Gavin McInnes was advised to step down from the group for one reason, and one reason only, which is that if they had a clear leader, the Proud Boys uh, would have been convicted of gang assault as opposed to standard assault. And this is a technicality in the legal system. Oh, I understand, Cash. Don't worry. We're going to be moving on to other stuff after this. I just really wanted to share this with a lot of people. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So Gavin McInnes stepped down from the Proud Boys in order to spare his own dudes from getting gang assault. Yeah, exactly. I know. I know. Why would you want to get the report? Yeah, exactly. They don't want to be in there. They don't want to be identified. Um, and yeah, so, uh, um, a bunch of them are in prison now. Gavin McInnes left the Proud Boys, but the Proud Boys continued on and now they had, and then after he stepped down, they had their lawyer, the racist lawyer I told you about earlier, and now they have Enrique Tario, which you guys have probably seen. But he left the Proud Boys. That's why he stepped down. It wasn't even his ass. He was just trying to change the charges. Yeah, and you can see this here. Um, if you uh, if you want any evidence here, anybody who doesn't believe me, bam, here's my here's some of my citations. Bam, here you go. Citations. Enjoy multiple reports about why he stepped down. He was advised by his lawyer to step down so that his guys wouldn't get charged with gang violence. Yep. Yep. Linkies. The linky. So. Now that we know what the Proud Boys do and who the Proud Boys are, let's talk about the Proud Boys in general. Are the Proud Boys who they say they are? No. The Proud Boys say that they're a white, or no, sorry, a Western chauvinist drinking club. In truth, they are a often Nazi right-wing extremist group that has done incredible physical harm to people. Um, are they trustworthy? No, they have been verifiably proven to lie about their status all the time, carrying all the way up to members like Gavin McInnes, who lies all the time and has lied about the group, how much they knew. I mean, he lied that they didn't have anything, um, you know, they didn't, uh, he lied that they didn't have any involvement when Unite the Right, even though he act, he actually provably told his followers to go to Unite the Right and he went to Unite the Right himself. Looks like they can't be trusted. So you can't trust Proud Boys when they're self-describing because they're liars. And they're not who they say they are. And, you know, just in case, you know, just in case we weren't sure, in case people hadn't decided whether or not the Proud Boys were a force for good or even a neutral force, we can't know what's in the minds of every Proud Boy. That's impossible. It's absolutely impossible to get into the minds of every Proud Boy. However, what we do know, what we can do, is we can analyze the, the evidence that's been brought before us. We can analyze the history of the group, the actions the group has taken. We can analyze the leadership of the group. And all of this, all of this points directly to one thing, which is that the Proud Boys are not even, they're not even just a neutral group. The Proud Boys are explicitly a dangerous and terroristic force in the United States. Unequivocally, their leaders are anti-Semites and racists. They beat people up. They have had multiple people who've ended up, who've been a part of the group, announced their intent to engage in violence, and then did so and were only asked to leave the group once they did that thing. Wait, is Proud Boys currently trending on Twitter? How perfect. How perfect. That worked out great. Debate. You think Canelo Alvarez is the pound for pound best fighter in the world right now? I don't know what I don't know anything about that. I don't know what that means, Doink Bra. I have no idea who that is. So numerous members have only uh, have sort of strategically announced uh, or sorry, st strategically renounced membership once too much attention was brought onto them. This is a pattern that they only leave the group once they've done enough harm uh, to be considered a PR threat. And the group continually tries to launder its PR reputation. Why am I saying this? Because everyone here should know that the Proud Boys 
are a bullshit organization. They are a bullshit organization. They constantly lies about what they do. They engage in violent terroristic acts. And they, they lie about it. They don't want you to know that because they're fucking cowards at the end of the day. That's what it boils down to. They're, they know that their ideas are so repugnant that if they were honest about them, nobody would agree with them. So they have to hide behind lies in order to continue to function and scoop out random Nazis and racists in the audience into their group. Aren't there also Cubans who are a part of the Proud Boys? Yes. And you know what's really funny about that? The really funny thing about, mem about the people who are a part of the Proud Boys is that literally just yesterday, there was a defection of about 120 members, including one that we talked about before, Kyle Based Stickman Chapman, who said that they were uh they were pulling out of the group because it got because they let too many brown people in and Jews. So I'm just gonna say that the a couple of Cuban members in the group really doesn't mean anything in the big picture. Strategy? Counter PR, mock them, belittle, treat them nicely like we would children at protests. Uh the way that you beat people like this is you promote information you debunk them you make them like just like just like people did with the kkk you expose them for what they are and you let the world see that and then they they can't operate in secret anymore they can't operate with their mask on anymore their disgusting behavior becomes obvious for the world to see and that's why i did this document and now we're here so now you know now you know the history of the proud boys not enough middle ground interested in the right will watch lefty stuff too. You'd be surprised. You'd actually be surprised. And here's the thing. They don't have to watch. Here's the here's the secret. Ready? Um, centrists don't have to watch my content to come into contact with my content. For example, all 388 of you, there's like almost 400 people watching right now. Now you all know about the Proud Boys. And if anybody brings them up, you can tell other people about them. Super cool. That's why I sell my channel to all of you as political edutainment because it's fun it's fun to hang out in my channel we do a lot of fun stuff and you get to learn stuff that can help make the world a better place there you go and now's the part where i beg about stuff thank you all for fucking all of your views and support but guess what? This show is supported by viewers just like you so if you want to toss me a sub that would be incredible it's okay, T, uh, T, T Soliday, T Soliday, the VOD will be up. But if you want to support me, shoot me a follow, follow my YouTube channel, join my Discord, and consider subbing or donating to my channel. Um, it is very easy to do so. You can go on my site and click the sub button. You can uh, donate. Um, any of those things uh, would be amazing. I do have a YouTube. Yes, I do. Here you go. It's right here. Uh, I, I don't stream on YouTube right now, but I will be in the future. Hey! Look at that, check a one. Thank you so much for the subscription. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you so much. You make this possible. Really means the world to me. And uh, it pays my bills. I mean, to a certain degree. I'm still a pretty small channel. But someday it might, which would be great. I would love to get that big. There's only up from here. So thank you very much. And there's my little, little shill. And now we have some really fucking fun stuff to do. Because, uh... This thing was was not what I had prepared because I, I saw that there was a lot of people in and I wanted an opportunity to get the history of the Proud Boys out there. So guess what? That means you all just got a fuckload of, of extra content and now we're going to do the other content I prepared. Wow! Such value! Demon Mama, incredible! Amazing value! Look at what you get! Hey, thank you for the sub, Flying Fish of Justice. Also, I'm going to pop a little YouTube uh, ad in here. Let's see. More content. More content. It's fucking Content City. This is a content metropolis. Oh, thank you so much, Gummy. That means the world to me. Gummy, that is really nice of you. Thank you. I'm glad you love it. I, I hope we'll see you again. A lot of people have been sticking around. My content's been blowing up lately. Comrade Anthony with the amazingly generous tier one subscription. Do I have a background in teaching? Oh, there it goes. 
Do you have a background in teaching? I'm a preschooler teacher and must commend the education skills you have. Hey, thank you so much. That's really kind. I don't actually have a background in teaching. However, I am very passionate about communication and teaching is one of those things. Um, so yeah, uh, while I've never taught like formally, it's something I'm really interested in and it's something I spend a lot of time thinking about. I try to think about how I can make things make sense to people who aren't me. That's really my goal. Um, my goal is to, again, be able to make my ideas make sense to other people that aren't in my head. And so I'm really passionate about that. That's basically been what I've devoted my life to in one form or another. Um, originally, I did a lot of writing. Um, I used to work in the film industry like a long ass time ago, like in really like small positions, but it was really fun. Um, so yeah, uh, no, no education history, but nonetheless, I believe very strongly in education and in doing so effectively. So rhetoric is something I'm interested in, stuff like that. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Comrade Anthony, thank you so much. It's really generous of you and kind. Demon Mama is my most viewed streamer in the Twitch doc for the first time today. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, Mit Nerd. Happy to hear it. Also, welcome. Happy to see you. Um, totally unrelated, but I've been so glad to have knowledge to debunk the conspiracies about the election. I live in a conservative area that voted 80-20 for Trump. Loving this. Hell yeah. And in fact, um, Charnel, I don't know if you were here earlier. Um, uh, if you were here earlier on in this stream, we did a top to bottom coup debunk thing. So when this VOD goes up, if you didn't catch that part, y'all can go watch it once the VOD goes up. The VOD will go up right when it's right when I'm done streaming. And the whole first segment of this was literally, I was literally doing election math. So if you want to see debunks of voter fraud, if you want to see strong arguments for why Donald Trump is indeed pushing us into a coup and why we should be concerned, there you go. There you fucking go. Yeah. All right. So with all that said, with all of that said, now it's time to do fun stuff. We have a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Did Elon end up getting permabanned for being a seething idiot? Yes, Elon Musk got permabanned because he was a seething idiot. Is there a research doc for this Proud Boys stuff? I need it for when my crazy uncles try to hand wave me saying the Proud Boys are bad. Yes, um, there is, is a document, but I haven't uploaded it yet. So you know what I'm going to do? Real quick, I'm going to upload it right now. So because everybody's asking for it, so I'm going to give you it in its current form. And then I will update it over time. Give me a second. Just give me a second. One minute. I will share it. I know I was, I'm nervous about, listen, I'm nervous about sharing my stuff because, uh, you know, I don't know. I get nervous about it. Okay. Like my tech stuff, my brain works in a special way, but I'll clean it up over time. Oh God. Oh no. Everything broke. Oh God. Oh no. Wait, I know what I need to do. Hold on. I know what to do. I know how to do this. Here we go. Give me, give me a section. Give me a second. Give me a second. Hey, thank you so much for the tier one subscription. Nice to, to discover, discover new pod lefty, lefty streamers, streamers every, every day. day. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of us. It's fucking awesome. Let me just, uh, let me just export this document real quick. Uh, and then I'll update it over time. Uh, actually, I think I can just do this. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, here we go. Sorry, I know this is kind of lame. I hope you all won't run away because I'm, I'm taking two seconds to share my document. That would be very sad. Uh, da, 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 da. Fuck. I need to go to Google Drive. Fuck. This is so annoying. Why is it so annoying to get into Google Drive? Research docs. Here we go. Here we go. And let's let's upload this document here. Whoop. I also have an Antifa research document that I did, which is really good. I guess I'll put both of those in here. My Antifa document was awesome. You all saw. Did anybody see my Antifa debate? It was fucking great. I was really proud of that one. My one against Rob Knorr. Very proud of that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Here we go. And let me rename this one. Oh, 
Okay. And how do I do this here? Uh, here we go. There we go. Okay, here you go. Boom. Here you go. Here's the links. This is the folder. If you follow this link, it will take you to my research docs and you guys can access them. Um, you should be able to see them. Let me know if you can't and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make it work. Let me just say the linky. Yep. There we go. Bam. Now you guys can see the docs. There you go. So there you go. Those are my uh, research docs for these. I will clean them up over time and make them properly useful. But for now, there's my sources. They're pretty well sourced. There's a couple of things I need to clean up. Um, but again, yeah, this was uh, this was like my my Proud Boys research was like eight solid hours of research. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I, I'm going to try and do my best to keep my research documents up to date. I really think that information is key going forward. And again, that's what I'm aiming for. The fiery research doc. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'll have an ultimate one. Yeah, but for now, this will have to do because uh, I have a lot of shit that I'm working on. And uh, this will have to do for now.